Hi guys, Ashantin here. How are you? I am in... I dropped something then. I thought I saw something. It's probably one of those. Go flying past me. I am down... Let me get F1 on in the mines. And you won't believe this, guys. I am mining for granite. And it's one of the sentences I never, ever thought I would say that I'm mining for granite. As you know, one of the, um, not tasks, but goals I had set myself was to try to hate granite less. I'm not sure. Actually, I might actually be beginning to like it. Um, it's really, really weird. I'm building way outside my comfort zone. I'm building in biomes that I've not really built in before. I'm building with blocks I've never built before. So I'm trying to open my mind and say, look, just because the whole of, oh, yay, I'm short of iron, I'm desperately short of iron. Um, just because the whole of Hermitcraft hate diorite doesn't mean to say I do. You know, just because other people like granite doesn't mean to say that I should. But nonetheless, I'm trying to open my mind and say, well, look, everything has its use. We really need to, oh, yes, more. We really need to evaluate all these blocks because we have so many new colours, um, so many new ways of doing things. I think that one of the things we really need to do in 1.12, I am finding so much stuff low, low down in this map. I tell you, I am mining not at my normal level of 10, but down at bedrock most of the time. I think this 1.12 release is a time to uh, open one's mind and just say, look, you know, just because other people don't like something, just because it's the received wisdom that diorite looks like bird dirt, doesn't mean to say it does. Doesn't mean to say it's not an appropriate block. For something you want to do. So I'm trying to be very open-minded and it's actually paying off quite well. Um, I don't think I've ever built such appalling builds but I don't think I've ever learned so much so quickly and had to reevaluate how I build to accommodate the colours, the new blocks, the way they work, whether they work on a three pattern or a four pattern. It's all learning guys. And when I thought to myself, right, today I need to, you know, I'm, sh gosh, I'm short of everything. I'm short of um, granite. I need to mine granite. And I thought to myself, gosh, I never thought I'd say that. And it reminded me of a poem by one of the, well, one of my favourite, if not my absolute favourite, American poets, Robert Frost. Um, I've actually got one of his original books that I found in a second-hand bookshop here. Um, it's gorgeous. And he has this poem about the road, the road less travelled. And he said that's the road that he took. Now, I actually agree with him on that. Um, he did take the road less travelled. And... I think to myself, well, I'm just going to put one in here, actually two, because I want this on burnt up as quickly as I can. And you guys all know that, oh, I'm going to have to sleep. Winnie's on here with me. I'm so pleased she's got a computer up and running. In. And um, I thought to myself, you know, Computer games is a road that is actually very well travelled for a lot of people, but to me, it's not. You know, I'm not someone who, well, all of you know, I'm mostly tech blind. I can't get that redstone until I've. Let's get the rest of this granite while we're waiting for the iron to cook up. And I love his poetry. And I suddenly thought to myself, you know, there's an awful lot of criticism of computer games. It takes up people's time, people aren't outside getting exercise. Well, at the moment in England, it's 
horribly cold. It is horribly damp. Um, it's absolutely miserable for this time of year. And I don't think the underlying temperature is that bad. But we have northeasterly winds and they really are super, super cold at the moment. So what are you going to do, you know? Yeah, you can go to the gym, but there's only so many hours you can spend in the gym. Um, so if you do want to actually relax, enjoy yourself for a while, what is wrong in playing computer games? And also, along with other things, like I never thought I would play computer games, I never thought I'd mine for granite, um, is something else, and that is... Where does that go? Oh gosh, I haven't got any, um, I haven't got much cobble with me, good heavens. I never thought that I would be friends with an international team. I never thought that I would be able to say, good morning, Winnie, to someone in Australia. I never thought that I would be friends with a group that cover three generations worldwide. I didn't realise how incredibly strong um, relationships can be when you play on computers, when you play in teams, when you play together. I just didn't realise any of that. Um, so to me, it's all a very, very good learning curve. And it's something that I greatly appreciate having. And I think to myself, well, all these people who, you know, criticize um, computer games. Have they ever played them? Have they ever been part of a team? Or are they so damn sour-faced that they're the sort of people that nobody wants to play with? Or are they people who basically don't approve of computers at all? And I mean, I know there are people like that. Why wouldn't there be? So I'm thinking, you know, guys, if you don't approve of computer games, start playing them. Start understanding where people come from, why they like these things, what is so fascinating about them. And, you know, just get on with life and stop criticising other people. Because we've got, you know, some pretty young teenagers playing with us. Two, they're, they're men and women, but I'm going to say the English saying, to a man. So, Bella, Gummy... You know, guys, don't get offended by that. That's just an English expression, um, meaning everybody. But to a man, the guys and girls who play with us, who are in their, I put one down there, in their early teenage years, are indescribably mature. You know, I can't actually tell the difference between their attitude to life. I'm sure there is one outside work. Um, outside computer games, but I'm calling this work, that's ridiculous, isn't it? But when it comes to computer games, you know, guys like, um, well, all our teenagers, frankly, can leave me standing when it comes to computer tech and computer skills. I mean, they are the people who, you know, help people who are tech blind like me. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what's wrong with that? You know, we've got guys here, people say, oh, you play computer games, you know, waste of life. Well, how many teenagers, probably most of them these days, but these are international friendships. These are people who can get on with people internationally, who understand the difference in, is that stuff cooked here? In people's, um, people's attitudes to life, and they have to accommodate different attitudes. There's no doubt about that. Um, you can't treat someone from different walks of life, different nationalities, as if they have the same um, attitudes to life as ourselves. Um, it is well known that the English are, you know, have a well, have a huge lack of. Um, <laughs> We don't show our emotions, basically. We're very cool people. And I'm sure my server mates find that difficult sometimes when I'm a fairly cool person in comparison to most of them. They make allowances. Why wouldn't they? You know, they have learned to make allowances. The sense of humour 
I have to be really careful because the English have a very raunchy sense of humour. Now, I know that my friend David in Stockholm um, probably has a sense of humour that's even worse than mine. Um, he has a very, very keen sense of humour, a very keen sense of humour. Um, but, actually, might be an idea. Let's take this layer out and let's just block off some of that lava and I can get to this granite. Um, but I wouldn't dream of using that raunchy sense of humour of mine too much um, because we have youngsters playing on this server. You know, we've got people who may come from a very different background when it comes to religion and belief and, you know, their social, what is socially acceptable to them. And therefore one learns to be careful. You also learn that if you do cause offence, you damn well apologise quickly. Um, say that you're wrong and make it better. These are all life lessons. And I think that, you know, many of the youngsters playing computer games, they get upset with each other. Um, you know, it's harsh sometimes when you may lose when you're in battles and stuff like that. Oh, my. Um, but I think these are good life lessons, how to play with teams, how to play with international teams. I mean, for goodness sake, most of us um, these days either have worked internationally, will work internationally, or do work internationally. That's an important skill set. So, yes, I'm mining granite. But... Mining granite is part of an incredible life experience for me, um, which is learning about computer games, learning how valuable they are. Um, and remember that your international team on a computer game can support you when the whole world is going wrong. They are a completely different support people. These are not your neighbours, they're not your work colleagues, they're not your friends at school. These are people who can see you through the bad times just as much as any bosom buddy. And never think that just because you don't know what people look like, just because you don't see them physically, we are creatures of the mind who play computer games. We are wonderful people, we work through avatars. We have a totally different view on life. It's an international view. It is a very, very team-organised view. So to anyone who says computer games are bad, play them. Get yourself an international team. Get into it properly and then say what you think. So there you are, guys. It is amazing what mining for granite can lead to. Bye-bye. <laughs>